Today, there's an app for just about everything. But wouldn't it be great if there was a digital tool to help you with something that involves running your ESOP, like, say, repurchase obligation? Well, guess what? There is a digital tool to help you with that. The folks from ESOP Economics are going to come up and give us a demonstration of their software. So good morning, everyone. And thank you for joining us for today's demonstration of Telescope, the number one repurchase obligation software. My name is Linda McPolin from ESOP Economics, and I have with me my colleague, Jalen Sunshine. So we'd like to start by giving you some background information about ESOP Economics before we take you into the software. Founded in 1993 by Judy Kornfeld, we are the leading experts in ESOP repurchase obligation studies, sustainability analysis, and consulting. And combining our expertise with our industry-leading software telescope, we help companies make educated decisions about their repurchase obligations. Oh. How do I get the next one here? <laughs> oh. OK, so I'd like to give a little more detail about how we can help ESOP companies. So we can help you answer three key questions about your repurchase obligations. The first question, how big will the repurchase obligations be, and when will they occur? So by using our telescope software, as well as our expertise, we prepare long-term forecasts of repurchase obligations, or repurchase obligation studies. And the second question, very importantly, will there be enough cash to cover the repurchase obligations, as well as other business needs? So to answer this question, we can perform a sustainability analysis, which involves integrating the repurchase obligation forecast into a dynamic financial model to put the repurchase obligation in the context of company cash flows. And lastly, what is the best way to manage and fund the ESOP given the company's goals? So we help companies evaluate alternative strategies for handling the repurchase obligation. And by strategies, we mean tools such as ESOP distribution policy and funding strategy. And we can also help you analyze benefit levels and understand the sufficiency of your current funding strategy. So Telescope was first released in 1997, and we have continuously updated the software throughout the years. It is the most comprehensive repurchase obligation software on the market, and over 500 ESOP companies have used Telescope to forecast the repurchase obligations. So with that, let's take a look at the Telescope software itself. Telescope is web-based. Therefore, our users enjoy anytime, anywhere access with a simple online login. There's never a need to download or install anything on your computer. And we are also able to push out seamless global updates um, when we add new features or when new statutory limits or actuarial tables become available. So from our home screen, um, you can view our upcoming events. For example, we do periodic training webinars for our Telescope users, which are included in your subscription to Telescope. So now let's dive into doing a repurchase obligation study. Telescope's ability to model an unlimited number of studies and scenarios is what makes it such a powerful planning tool. So each year, when you have your new allocation file from your third-party ESOP administrator, you will be creating a new study. For ease of modeling, you can copy the prior year's study as the starting point for the current year. And this makes it very easy and cost-effective to update your study each year. And within any study, you can model as many scenarios as you'd like. So first, we recommend developing a solid base case scenario based on the status quo. You can then quickly copy the base case and create an additional scenario. And additional scenarios are useful for stress testing key assumptions. So your strategy may work in a steady growth environment, but what happens if there's a downturn? 
running multiple scenarios is also useful to help you evaluate alternative strategies. So we will take a look at the base case for purposes of this demo. But I'd just like to note that as part of your initial subscription to Telescope, we will assist you in setting up your first study and we'll populate some of the basic data for you. And now I will hand it over to Jalen to walk you through the software. All right. The first step to creating a repurchase obligation study through Telescope is to upload your census and account balance information. As a part of your initial setup, we will format and upload your census data using your most recent allocation file. From then on into the future, when you update your studies, you will then use our downloadable Excel template. You can change your census information in Telescope at any time. The sort, search, and filter functionality allows you to find and edit information as needed. An example of this is you can specify specific retirement age assumptions right in the software. Once you upload your census data into Telescope, there are five data screens to populate. You have the plan overview, stock, OIA, distribution rules, and employee groups. The first screen we're going to look at is the plan overview screen. We'll enter your basic plan provisions as defined in your summary plan description as a part of your initial setup. Here, the rules relating to eligibility, early and normal retirement age, allocations, and vesting are housed. We're going to look at the vesting screen as an example. Here, you can vary the assumptions for uh, years that apply towards vesting and forfeiture reallocation. You can also create custom vesting schedules to mimic and model the future of your company. We've been modeling ESOPs for, for a long time, so Telescope can handle pretty much anything out there when it comes to your plan document and uh, your basic plan provisions. The, this screen, most likely, you won't update every year uh, because these are based on your plan document. The only time you would change it is when you would make an amendment based on any of these rules or uh, items. <laughs> the next screen we're going to look at is the stock screen. This screen contains information about company stock that is owned by the ESOP. You can easily track multiple tranches of stock, especially if you have more than one ESOP loan, if you have pre-1987 stock, or if you have shares with unique rules that vary or apply to your vesting schedule or your distribution policy. Other key assumptions to enter in this screen are if you're making stock contributions or future uh, ESOP share purchases, as well as your current ESOP loan schedules. You can also, in this screen, not only put in one single assumption for the entire study, you can also vary your assumptions by year. So in this example, you can put in a year-by-year -year share value assumption that changes for each year of your study. You can also just put in one share value growth rate. This allows the flexibility to really model the future of your company and your ESOP in the way uh, that will allow for the best repurchase obligation study. You can also, on this screen, model S distributions or dividends on ESOP shares. Yeah. 
not only can you track stock in your ESOP, but also cash. This screen holds any other investment accounts or assets other than ESOP stock in your ESOP. Some ESOPs don't maintain cash balances, and in that case, you would skip this screen. If you fund your ESOP on a pay-as-you-go basis, you would also not need to enter anything here. However, if you're making annual planned contributions to target a specific benefit level as a percentage of covered compensation, this is where you would model it. Our next screen is one of our favorite screens in Telescope, the distribution rules screen. This is a valuable tool in evaluating alternative strategies for funding and managing your ESOP repurchase obligations. We're actually going to start at the bottom of the screen. Telescope is able to model just about any distribution policy. You can you, <laughs> you can pay out uh, in all ty different types of ways. And it's a great, valuable tool. Ooh. Sorry about that. So we have a, uh, so the bottom half of the screen allows you to model different ways of uh, your distribution policy. When we say distribution policy, we mean the way, the timing, and the how you're going to distribute accounts when somebody leaves. An example of this is you might have a extra five-year wait for somebody who leaves prior to retirement age. You can also model the how it is paid out. So you can model if it's a lump sum or an installment. You can even make exceptions for large and small account balances by using our distribution limits box. On the top of the screen is our repurchase method and funding rules. By repurchase method, we mean recycling or redeeming and how you fund those methods. You can use a combination of uh, current account balances, contributions, S distributions, and re-leveraging in order to model the funding of your ESOP. Basically, if you name it, Telescope can model it. Here is a example of the repurchase method that you can do. Not only can you do one repurchase method for the entire study, you can also do it by year, which is especially, especially useful if you're planning on amending your distribution policy. Here in this example, uh, we are modeling that the first four years we are going to recycle and we're going to use the uh, current assets in the ESOP, the OIA, and then we're going to put in additional contributions as needed. In the fifth year of the study, we're going to model a one-time re-leveraging. This gives you a lot of flexibility to play with future strategies in your repurchase method and funding. You can also apply a cap to your contributions as a percentage of covered compensation. For instance, you can target a specific benefit level or you can put the cap at the 25% IRC limit for deductibility. <laughs> lastly, you can, <laughs> lastly, you can uh, fine tune your assumptions by employee group. You can split your employee group in any way you'd like. Uh, a lot of times we'll do it by compensation, but you can also do it by job description and even by location. You can make demographic and actuarial assumptions using this screen and the most up-to-date 
published turnover tables. You can even create your own turnover table using a combined table of age assumptions, uh, years of age and years of service, as well as uh, creating uh, flat turnover tables in Telescope. You can also make assumptions regarding your workforce growth and individual salaries, either for the entire study or just for uh, year by year. You can also use Telescope to specify the expansion employees and replacement employees that will come into your ESOP in the future. You can say exactly how old they will be and what their compensation will be. It's a great tool for projecting and assuming the growth of your ESOP in the future. Telescope also has the capacity to model distributions based on your plan document requirements. You can once again decide to model a single diversification election rate, or you can change your diversification election rates by year to really reflect what you believe is going to happen in the future. Telescope even allows you to model a in-service distribution, either, even if it's a one-year or if it's an ongoing in-service distribution. It gives you the flexibility to project these uh, additional distributions in your ESOP. And if you have a 401k component uh, to your ESOP, we can model that also. Now we'll jump into the reports that you can run through Telescope. There are three reports uh, that are, three types of reports that are available. You have the planned data reports, the individual reports, and the aggregate reports. First, we'll look at the planned data reports. This screen allows you to view reports that summarize your participant data and all of the assumptions we've looked at in the last five screens. The planned data reports also allow you to run awesome <coughs> charts that really illustrate uh, your current population. It's a great way to identify possible patterns or future increases in repurchase obligations. As you can see in the example that we're showing here, a majority of the population has shares and they are in between the ages of 55 and 65. This is, by looking at this, this is a great way for us to be aware that there's going to be a possible increase in repurchase obligations as those participants reach retirement age. And now Linda will tell us more about the other reports. Okay, um, so in just a minute, uh, we will take a look at the aggregate reports um, where you can review projections for the total ESOP and also at the employee group or tranche level. But first, I'd just like to note that projection reports are available at the individual level as well. So to the extent that you'd like to have some visibility of some top account holders, you are able to run individual account projections. So under the aggregate reports, you can view the whole list of available reports, which are available in PDF format, as well as Excel, and there's even a few charts. So first, we'll take a look at a chart for the projected number of shares repurchased. And what I like about this chart is you can really see what's driving your repurchase obligations. So this shows the projected number of shares to be repurchased for each reason. So for turnover, retirements, diversification, death, disability, and even our one-time in-service distribution. And these charts can easily be saved, so you can include them in a report that you might develop for your board. 
And we can also take a look at the same report in the PDF format. So again, like you saw in the chart, this is broken down by reason. Um, so we can quickly drill down and see what is causing our repurchase obligations to be high in any given year, and just overall what is driving our repurchase obligations. Also in this report, we can see the breakdown between shares that might be recirculated versus redeemed or even releveraged. So next, we will take a look at one of our other favorite reports, which is the sources and uses of cash for ESOP trust. And what I like about this report is this gives you visibility of the cash flows for the ESOP. So you can understand whether you'll be accumulating cash reserves in the plan over time based on your planned funding strategy and also where your funding strategy may fall short. So in this case, um, we do see some beginning of year cash or OIA balances in the plan. But over time, those are depleted. And the cash is getting into the plan through the planned cash contributions and S distributions that were modeled. And then we're seeing several years where the model is calculating that our planned sources of cash are not sufficient. So at that point, the reserves are depleted and we are having to make additional cash contributions. And if we go to the next page of this report, we can see the cash flows out of the ESOP. So cash that's used for any internal loan payments, for recirculating shares associated with the releveraging and also without that releveraging, um, any cash balances that may get paid out to participants, and our total cash leaving the ESOP each year. And then finally, we can see our end of year balances after all of the activity. So those are just a couple examples of reports that are available. Other reports are available that help, help you analyze and understand things like benefit levels, demographic activity, and other percentages that can help you understand the turnover of shares in the ESOP as well as keeping the numbers in context over time. So if you ever need help while working in Telescope, we have many technical support options. On every screen in Telescope, you will see this Need Help button appear somewhere on the screen. And if you click on this button, it will describe the whole screen in detail and gives you definitions of specific words. In addition to that, there is a link to a help video that walks you through the entire screen. And you can also access other technical support documents through our help menu. Also, basic technical support is included in your subscription. So you can contact us whenever you need help at our phone number or support email address, which are at the bottom of every screen and telescope. And then finally, we do provide that basic initial setup and have a walkthrough call to help you get started. So, ESOP Economics not only has telescope software, but we can help you do some or all of your repurchase obligation studies. We can format and upload the census for you. We can analyze your turnover history of your company. We can do a study audit or we can do the full repurchase obligation study. We do have a lot of clients that choose to have us do a repurchase obligation study on a periodic basis to make sure that their forecast is being done by a third party uh, other than themselves. <laughs> we are also available to consult with you regarding strategy and alternative methods of funding and managing your ESOP. We are here to help in any way we can in order to help you prepare for the future of your ESOP and make sure that it remains sustainable. Now to discuss pricing. The initial setup is $5,100 for the first year. That includes entering the basic plan provisions as supplied by your summary plan description, 
the we will format and upload your census for you. We will then schedule a 90 minute walkthrough call that trains you and allows us to discuss what is needed to put more information, all your assumptions into that study, as well as unlimited tech support and the availability for periodic training webinars. After the first year, the subscription fee is $2,550, and there is an additional $255 annual fee per additional user. If you have any questions or concerns, please give us a call at 215-606-3600 or email us at info at esopeconomics.com. Linda and I and the rest of the ESOP team are also available to speak with us at booth 121 at any time at the, for the rest of the conference. So we hope that you stop by and see us and ask any questions or concerns you might have uh, regarding telescope or um, the repurchase obligation studies that ESOP Economics can help you with. Thank you so much for all of your time. Thank you.